Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. We are so grateful to our Father for this opportunity has granted us. Like we always say, grace and peace be with you. And I pray that today you shall see, you may see the glory of God. Because the glory of God is right here with us in the person and the presence of Jesus Christ, which Paul calls Christ in you. And he calls it the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Thank God for Christ's presence in us. Thank God for Christ's presence in us. And imagine when he did this, it is and was out of love that he chose to dwell in us. And he knew that this would change everything. The purpose of dwelling in us was to elevate humanity into divinity because there's no way that God would make you his abode and you remain ordinary. So that's what we discover with the gospel, the good news, the good news. The good news and you should always remember good news is good news it will never change it is good news and its nature it's about presenting and revealing Jesus Christ but not only Jesus that through him we discover God and we discover our true identity In Romans chapter 4, verse 8, verse 7, verse 7 we read, and I can read again, it says, saying, blessed, that's David. You know, let me begin with 6 to have the whole idea. It says, even as David also describeth, that means he described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth, imputes righteousness without words, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. This is one of the things we've been discussing about and we're looking into the blessedness of this man. And we said, if the man whose sins were covered Iniquities, sins forgiven, and iniquities covered, you can imagine how much more us who are standing in the dispensation whereby the Lamb of God took away our sins. He did not cover them, he took them away. If David in the Old Testament realized how much he was blessed, because his iniquities were covered, sins forgiven. How about us? I want you to discover how much you're blessed because of that fact of forgiveness, the fact that you're forgiven, but now we're dealing with the separation between you and sins and when he talked about forgiveness in the Old Testament, it's different from the forgiveness in the New Testament. Because the word Paul uses is aphesis. And aphesis means the separation. So there is a separation that took place. But 
again, remember that what David was saying here, he was actually anticipating the justification that was to take place through faith in Jesus Christ. He was actually prophesying. He saw this because he was a prophet in the Old Testament, we are told. So David is actually talking about the blessedness of the man whose iniquities are for a covered sins taken away, uh, sins forgiven. But actually, he's also talking about something greater that will come, though he could not grasp it all, because what it was much more than what he saw. So, you have to understand that this blessedness state that he was talking about is, uh, the word is makarios. And makarios conveys the idea of pertaining to being happy. It's about being happy. In other words, happy is the man. You see, there are some versions that use this word, happy is the man. Or it might also mean enjoying divine favor and prosperity. Or it can also mean to be fortunate and divinely privileged. See, this is the meaning, blessed is the man. It means a lot. And he wanted us to discover that well, we are favored. He wanted us to discover that we are divinely privileged. And he wanted us to enjoy the happiness from him. So the state of blessedness was to give us this experience. And this experience was to come as a result of knowing that our iniquities are forgiven and sins covered. In the Old Testament, that was the mentality, but in the New Testament, that's, that all this has been taken away. Glory to God that all this has been taken away. All this is being taken away. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All this has been taken away. So there's nothing to cry about. There's rather a lot to shout about with joy and gladness, with a state of divine favor and divinely privileged. We should see ourselves as privileged by God to offer to us this wonderful gift and this gift there are no strings attached it is a free gift glory to god forevermore thank you lord jesus thank you jesus this is the state where god wants us to be this is the place where he wants us to be so the teaching here that Paul is actually revealing is a new system of justification. A different way that God will be dealing with his people. And this is revealed in the gospel. That's what we preach, the gospel. And he's saying that See, righteousness is the revelation that bestows the blessing of God upon a man. Because the same blessed is the man. If now sins are not counted upon you, if you are, your sins are covered, then it means you are A man who actually receives something in contrary 
On the contrary, what you received is righteousness. And righteousness, like I said, is a revelation that bestows the blessing of God upon a man. So you are supposed to be blessed because your sins were the issue, the problem, the limitation. But now that limitation is no more because of the work of Jesus Christ. And therefore, you are blessed. You are blessed. And you should, you should look at yourself and tell yourself that you're blessed because that's the fact. The word iniquities in Greek actually means anomia. And anomia means perverseness of heart. Or it might also mean lawlessness. See, that perverseness, the lawlessness, is no more. See, it actually means that uh, you know exactly what you're doing, and you're doing it anyway, even if you know that is wrong. You know, it's actually trespassing, going beyond the borders of uh, certain limitations, but which is, of course, illegal. So, these were things that were going on in the hearts of these people. These, the iniqu these iniquities will cause people to... to condemn themselves because they are aware of these things that they've trespassed. So, he says iniquities are covered. Everything that was accusing you, there's no accuser anymore. Nothing can accuse you because of the power of the work of Jesus Christ. And forgiveness, like he said, is a faces. It means to send away, let go, to release and deal graciously with. Forgiveness is actually the free gift of God that sends away all our iniquities and sins. If you were a slave, you're no more a slave to any sin. You've been forgiven, you are separated. That is the meaning of forgiveness and that means they have been judged by Jesus Christ he's been our representative representation and presentative actually the forgiveness of sins is a basic component of justification brothers and sisters we've been forgiven and this is something to jubilate about, something to shout about. I want you to realize that God only wants you to be happy and be joyful because of the work of Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.